2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, Do not let the enemy, let Satan outwit you, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Now, the reason why that had to be put in scripture is because there are so many people who are ignorant or unaware of Satan's schemes. That just simply means they have no idea what he's doing and it's happening all around them. And then the Bible says in another place, how will we know about these things of the spirit unless a teacher is sent? And so I've been sent into your phone, into your newsfeed to teach you about the schemes of the devil so that he does not outwit you and cause you to accept accept something that looks so normal, so common, but it's actually going to destroy you, which is why we're going to jump right into this. I'm not going to waste any time. The 10 most common cursed objects that you have in your home. Okay. And as we go through each and every one of these, I'm going to give you a brief, brief explanation so you don't have to Um, just wonder why. I get a lot of questions about this, and I want to make sure that I am operating in a lot of wisdom as we go through this teaching, okay? Now, the very first one is a dream catcher. Now, you may have a dream catcher in your home. Uh, Commonly, dream catchers are above beds. People put them symbolically to say, well, I, I hope it catches all the bad dreams and then enables me to have only good dreams. But you know, the Bible says that Satan actually comes imitating an angel of light. And so witchcraft always comes in the form of false hope. It always comes in the form of false help. And so just like you see this picture of a dream catcher, you know, it looks peaceful, it looks serene, but the reality of it is um, it is witchcraft. Now, oftentimes while I'm doing these kinds of teachings, people say, Pastor, Mike, you're not being culturally sensitive. That's Native American culture or the other cultures that I speak about. Listen, I am not bashing a culture. I just need to be clear, but I am a pastor and it's my obligation to teach the scriptures. And as we begin to break these things down today, I hope that you can understand with a level of maturity that I have to talk and teach about the Bible. Okay. And so no, I am not, this is not anti-Native Americans, the people. People, but the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers in high places. So I am not fighting a culture. I'm not fighting any one human, but there are demonic spirits behind these things. And if we are not wise, we will end up again um, be, being taken captive by demonic spirits who are operating in and through and around these objects. Okay. And l- let me just say that these dream catchers, they show up in many different places of our life, okay? The dream catchers can show up in bedrooms like I showed a picture previously. They show up oftentimes in cars and what it represents is a false hope. This thing is going to help me. Witchcraft always comes in the form of false hope, false help, okay? If you have a dream catcher, you've got to remove it destroy it and remove it and throw it away because they're behind that is demonic activity. Okay, let me go a little bit deeper because we're going to move on to the next one. And again, I get a lot of kickback. I get a lot of people who don't understand these things and they get very upset when I talk about them. And it may actually be demons inside of them that are manifesting and getting mad. And so we might have demons in the comments or in the chat right now as I even talk about these things. But in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26, It says, neither shall you bring an abomination or an idol into your house, lest you become an accursed thing like it, but you shall utterly detest and abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. So Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26 is referencing how Israel was always bordered by all of these pagan nations. And oftentimes the children of Israel would mess up by bringing some of their idols into their homes and into their lives. And over and over and over again in scripture, God had to say, you shall not have uh, any other God beside me. And you've got to utterly destroy. And, and, And even in other scriptures, it says, burn it, destroy it, okay? But I think Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 26 is very important because it says, Neither shall you bring an abomination into your house lest you become an accursed thing like it. And the thing that you need to understand is you always become the thing that you worship. You always become the thing that you worship. 
And so what happens when you bring these idols into your life is that you begin to conform your identity to the idol. And instead of you becoming more like Christ, you become more like that thing because you're not putting your trust in Jesus. You're putting your trust in that thing. Does that make sense? Can somebody just shout me down in the comments right now and let me know if this is helping them? (laughs) All right. Okay, good. I'm hoping that this is helping somebody. Another one that's that's next on the list is uh, Sage. And I want to talk about Sage just briefly. The reason why I want to talk about Sage is because there are some people who claim that sage has medicinal purposes. There's some people that set, claim that sage is antimicrobial and that when you burn it in your house, it helps you know destroy bacteria. Here's the thing. There are many other products that you can use. It's the simple fact that sage is connected to witchcraft. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you some other pictures tonight that help you understand that connection. Because th- this is the thing. The enemy is crafty. As a matter of fact, in scripture, he first shows up in the garden in the form of a serpent. And that means that he is stealthy, that he is always stalking and creeping. And so the enemy will cause you to normalize things. And then, oh, you'll say, well, sage, you know, I, I burn sage and it helps me in my home for, you know, antimicrobial, antibacterial. And then, but as you know, if you've studied witchcraft before, sage is a very, very common Uh, part of that practice. And so you've got to get rid of it. Can I get an amen? Sage is used for summoning. Sage is used for uh, conjuring. Sage is used for creating atmospheres and environments, and it's incorporated into many witchcraft practices, okay? And so you don't need it for, don't lie and say, oh, well, there's science behind it. You know what you're doing, okay? Number three is this, And just stay with me, Ouija boards. Now, I want to say this because there's people watching right now and they're saying, Pastor Mike, we don't have a Ouija board in our house, but I I want to increase your awareness. There are digital forms. There are digital forms of Ouija boards. There's digital forms of occult um, in different objects. And so sometimes you may not be aware of that. One of the other things that I'll say about Ouija boards is that your kids, and I've heard many of these stories, could actually own one, have them in their room. They feel bad about owning it. You don't know they have it. And it's. And I'm going to tell you, if your kid lives in your house, it's your house, your rules. It's your house. It's your belief system. It's your house. It's your God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, you don't get a choice. If you're my child, I choose for you. I program you. And for as offensive that is that, that is. I know that there are some social justice warriors and people that are listening right now that are like, you know, um, that that's brainwashing. No, it's not. It, it, see, everything has a belief system attached to it. Why do the why does the world get to determine which belief system is attached to our children? If you live in my house, I get to determine what you learn. And I say that because with things like Ouija boards, there's been many times where I've even and gone into my teenager's room. I've, I've played video games with her. I've come into her world in a loving, fatherly way. And then together we have found that on her, you know, PlayStation or, or Nintendo or whatever system that she has, that there's internet connections. And within those browsers, it, it will auto bring up horoscopes and different things like that. So don't assume that because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. As a matter of fact, one of the most purchased items in the month of October is, believe it or not, a Ouija board because people want to uh, conjure the dead. They want to speak to dead relatives. This is a time coming into the fall where people's in their, their, their awareness and their curiosity increases. If this video is helping you, you've got to hit the thumbs up right now to ensure that many more people see this video. So go ahead and hit the, hit the thumbs up right now. And, and help this video reach more people. Ouija boards, we've got to be careful because during the month of October, your kid may get one from a friend. They may find one at school in the garbage can. They may. The enemy is crafty. Just like I said, for 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Now we know that he is always working and scheming, okay? I'm gonna pick up the pace, so make sure you stay with me through all 10 of these because I don't want you to miss any of them. Okay, with that is tarot cards. 
tarot cards. And I want to show you in this picture, you can see Sage. Now look, now look, I just went online and typed in tarot cards. And this is what I want to say to all of the, the, the new agers that are probably watching this video and, and, and they're going to go in on me in the comment section about how, well, it's possible to use sage without it being ritualistic. Okay. It's so common to use sage while you are involved in other new age practices that even when you, you search for stock, um, stock pictures, it comes up. Okay. But again, tarot cards are more and more common. And again, just because you don't see them don't mean they're not there. As a matter of fact, I've talked to parents who have gone to their kids and said, hey, you don't own any tarot cards, do you? And to their amazement, they, their kid has said, you know what? I don't have a full deck, but I just have one because my friend gave me one. I've got, I use it as a bookmark. I've got it in my room. And I'm telling you, you've got to take inventory of what is in your house because if you don't take inventory of it, you might be holding your, you might be holding your family back from the next level. Let me tell you why. Because tarot cards are consulting the demonic realm so to get information about your future, to get, you know, and I'm saying this in air quotes right now, to get wisdom about next decisions to make. And so what is that? It's a counterfeit for the real thing, which is the Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. The Bible says that um, God will give you revelation, wisdom, knowledge, that the, the body of Christ, the church, that w- he uses the church to make his manifold wisdom known. And so we don't have to consult tarot cards. We have scripture. We have the word of God. And so if we don't know that, well, our kids might be in the other room, or maybe you may have a tarot card and not know it, okay? So we got to be wise. We've got to be wise. This is when, um, I've got somebody in the comments right now that said, yes, this happened with my eight-year-old. Okay. Now y'all know I'm not lying. Look at the comment section right now. They are confirming it. Okay. An eight-year-old had a tarot card in possession because the enemy is crafty, stealthy, always trying to see what he can do, okay? Here's the next one. This goes kind of all together. You see these items together, crystals, crystals. As a matter of fact, the the crystal, the picture that I have here actually shows a crystal on top of tarot cards. And we've got to be careful because right now, when you go to the mall, or you, I'm telling you what happens is the new age gets packaged Okay, it gets packaged with normal things. And so I'm going to buy a candle because I like the way this candle smells and I'm going to buy some new fresh linens for my bed. And then boom, there's a crystal next next to it in the form of decor. But then when you read about the company that the crystal is behind or you see that also, oh, that's weird. The, the crystal that's next to the home decor is also next to a deck of uh, tarot cards. It, see, what's happening right now is that uh, you know, they won't, they won't put Bibles in home goods stores and they won't put uh, crosses in home goods stores. But what will happen is they'll put, they'll package the new age. And so and this is how it happens. Okay. They, the, the crystals ends up getting packaged with all these other things. So you've got to be aware. And the reason why crystals have become so popular is because they're, they're aesthetic, they're beautiful. And people, you know, now listen, can you collect stones and crystals? Can you be somebody that's into nature? Can you be somebody that's like, oh, Pastor Mike, I, I'm not saying that like owning crystals or owning stones is necessarily, because some of you are going to read too much into this, because, you know, I, I've known people to collect different rare stones and gems and to collect different rocks. And I know people that are, uh, you know, within that realm um, of, of biology and, and, and into ecology and they're into the different sciences. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is you've got to know the spirit behind it. You've got to understand the spirit behind it. And if you're not wise, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26, it says, neither shall you bring an abomination or an idol into your house. So sometimes when you're purchasing these crystals, they'll come with different, um, you know, packaging that has different statements or phrases. And if you look up the company, if you go to their Instagram, if you go to their the different um, companies and you'll see the statements behind it and you'll start to see, oh no, that this is a cursed item 
because of the system that it has behind it, okay? And and so, yeah, if you're a geologist, if you're into that, fine. But I, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're buying something, the source of it, where it comes from, what it stands for, has a value system attached to it. And that's the biggest thing that I want to help you understand. There is a value system that's attached to this. There's a belief system that's attached to this. And so watch, healing crystals. So when you, when you think about crystals, you think about healing and they're connecting. Now, what we're supposed to do is help the world understand that by the stripes that Jesus Christ bore on his back, come on, can somebody help me in the chat right now? By his stripes, we are healed. And so it's not healing crystals, it's healing Savior, healing Jesus. So false hope, false healing healing. Come on. And so what will happen is that is that we disconnect the Savior from healing and we connect crystals. And see, it's idolatry. Idolatry is false hope, false healing. And what we've got to do is we've got to, we've got to say, no, I don't need a crystal because a crystal can't heal me the way that Jesus can heal me. And so that's what, what we, what I'm, the heartbeat of what I'm trying. Now, most people won't watch this whole video and they're going to hate on me in the comments. They're going to talk about how I'm a religious fanatic. But the thing is, I'm a man of God and I'm a preacher and I've got an obligation to tell you what Deuteronomy chapter seven verse. Verse 26 says, I've got an obligation to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. We will not let the devil outwit us. It's not, I don't need a healing crystal. I've got a healing savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going. This is, uh, that's the first five. You're halfway there. Make a commitment to stay for all 10. How good is this? Hit the subscribe button right now. If this is helping you, okay, hit subscribe, ring the bell notification so you never miss another video video. All right. So let's go with number six. Now this I've encountered a lot. I'm going to go deeper and I'm going to tell some really crazy stories. Um, I was in a home and I was actually, this woman told me, no, this is years and years ago. I don't make house calls anymore, but I was in a home and a woman told me I'm having poltergeist experiences. I'm having experiences where things are falling off of the walls and I'm having experiences where there's thumps and knocks and there's all this craziness going on. So I said, you know what? I'm going to show up with my GoPros. I'm going to set up cameras and I'm going to pray. Now I knew that the woman needed deliverance, but at the same time, I do believe that there are, are cursed objects and there are things that the enemy anchors to demons anchor to them. Demons draw strength from them. Demons create that value system around that object so that they can get access to their to your life. As a matter of fact, demons don't even want you to watch this right now because I'm going to reveal the truth and then you're going to utterly destroy, burn, and break down and get rid of these items and they're going to lose a source of power in your life. So this woman, I remember... I mean, remember like going throughout her house and just trying to discern, okay, God, what is it? And in one room in particular, there is a picture that in real time while I was praying through the house just fell right off the wall. And it was a bizarre experience. As that picture flew off the wall, I heard it crash down to the ground. I walked in and this is what I saw, okay? And I want to I wanna show you kind of what it looks like. I saw religious statues. Okay, religious statues. Now, oftentimes people purchase these statues because they represent luck or blessings. Those are cursed items. Now, again, I want to be culturally sensitive. I know that there are people watching who think that I'm ignorant, that think that I'm bashing a, another religion or another culture. I'm not doing that. But again, understand, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. Okay. So there is no such thing as truth in Buddha, in the prophet of Islam. There is no truth in Hinduism. There is no truth in any, according to a true Christian, those, those those gods do not coexist together. A true Christian believes that the only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. That's it. That is what the Bible teaches. And so uh, understand, don't come in my comment section telling me about how I'm disrespecting other religions if you are not respecting mine. <laughs> I mean, my, the Bible declares that there is only one way and it's Jesus. And so I can, I can now watch, I can separate the people 
that, that actually worship those, those gods or deities or worship. I can separate their ideologies and their religion f- from the spirit behind it. So I'm speaking on a spiritual level right now. And, and because I've, I've gotten canceled so many times for trying to do broadcasts like this. But, but again, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26 is just one of many scriptures where God is, is prohibiting. He's saying, even though these cultures are around you, Israel, even though these bordering nations are, you're doing business with them and you're in their markets and you're around them and they know you and you speak their language and they speak yours, do not bring their cursed items or objects into your home. Do not bring their value system and their belief system into your home because bringing it into your home means that you made a purchase and you made a decision to bring it into your soul. And so you've got to see the connection. Is this good teaching? Is this helping somebody right now? You've got to see the connection between bringing it in your home and bringing it into your soul. When you made a decision to buy one of these items, you're actually saying, come into my mind, come into my emotions. I have an emotion connection to this. I have a mental connection. I bought it with money. I feel something that there's, there, you hear what I'm trying to say? So there are religious statues that often represent luck or blessings that are cursed objects. Um, one that's very common, especially among Gen Z, uh, is the lucky cat. And you see this, the lucky cat. Why? Because again, Satan is always going to take the most acceptable form. He's not going to show up ugly. He's going to show up attractive, sexualized, erotic. He's going to show up, uh, he's not going to show up uh, in, in a form that you would reject. He's going to show up in a form you would accept. Okay. So what is it? It's a cute, fluffy, furry, lucky cat. Okay, but again, what's the problem with that, Pastor Mike? It's just decor. You you won't let us have anything, Pastor Mike. You 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 want to take everything from us, Pastor Mike. You everything's you're over spiritualizing. You're one of those religious fanatics. Why can't I have a lucky rabbit's foot? What why can't I have these these charms? Why can't I, I'm gonna tell you why? Because whatever whatever physical item you have, it becomes an idol. And now you've replaced, it's, the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. So I'm not going to acknowledge a lucky cat. I'm not going to acknowledge, a, a, you know, any kind of, what are these things called? These feet, these little, you know, I'm not going to, I don't, <laughs> a rabbit's foot can't help me. I, I look to the hills from whence my help comes. I, I'm looking to the maker of the universe. I'm looking to God almighty through the person of Jesus Christ. Christ. And, and so, no, I'm not talking about somebody in the chats asking, can we not have cats? I'm not talking about physical cats. I'm talking about, look at the picture. <laughs> there is a lucky cat, which is a very common item. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about. All right. So think about religious statues, statues of dead people, statues of dead figures, statues, religious statues for luck and for blessing is number six. Okay. Now let's, let's go a little bit further. I'm going to tell a crazy story right now about the next one, which is evil books. Okay. Evil books. If this is helping you, I want you to hit the the thumbs up. Just smash the like button right now. If this is helping you and you're getting something out of this video. Okay. Let's talk about evil books. This guy called me. And again, this was years ago. I don't do house calls anymore, but I used to document a lot of experiences. I would film it. I would show up. And this guy, he called me, he's like, you've got to get to my house now. I'm like, what's going on? He said, well, I I, I wanted to test it out. So I made sure that I wasn't wasting your time, but something is physically turning off the light switch. And he was like, uh, right downstairs where I live, he's like, I, I turned the light on, took a shower and I heard it click in the other direction. And then I came out and sure enough, it was now he lives alone. And then, and then he said, um, I did, I turned it on again. And then I was walking around the living room and then I heard the click and it turned off and I'm hearing all kinds of noises and, and, and I'm having these poltergeist supernatural experiences. Now I was, I was like, okay, I'll come over now and I'll pray for you. And, and I mean, this is a tough guy. This guy's a bodybuilder. This guy's a tough guy, but he was just completely powerless because this thing was spiritual and he didn't have any resources to fight a spiritual battle. But then as I was driving, I said, Holy Spirit, give me a revelation 
as to what is the source of this. Why is he experiencing this, this, this supernatural activity? Why, why does a demon in his house actually have the ability to flip a light switch on and off? Okay. You know, why is this happening? And immediately the Holy Spirit showed me a picture and the picture was a book in his bookshelf. And I told, I called the guy, uh, actually we're still on the phone. Um, and I, I told him, I said, I need you to go into a bedroom. I saw that there's a bookcase in a bedroom. Is that true? And he said, yes, my bedroom. I said, go into your bedroom. And I saw like on the top shelf, somewhere in the middle, a book. And all of a sudden he pulled, he said, I know exactly what book uh, you're talking about. You're freaking me out right now. I'm so scared. I have goosebumps all over my, the back of my neck and head. He's like, I feel like something's physically standing in front of me. And he was like, this is what it was. It was a book of witchcraft and it was actually world religions and different uh, rituals and, and incantations and spells from different cultures. And he was actually, and this is where it gets crazy. He said, I bought the book from a sociological perspective. I didn't buy it to do the witchcraft in it, but this guy's very in intellectual. He's very philosophical. And he was like, I wanted to, to learn about these different cultures, so therefore I bought this book. So he bought it thinking it was an innocent purchase, but again, it was a curse object. Now, as I continue going on ab about books, I need you to understand when we talk about evil books, who does the book glorify? What does the book glorify? How do you determine whether or not it's cursed? Okay, who does it glorify? I just want to go a step further. You know, a lot of women, what they are addicted to sexual fantasy books. I would say that that's a cursed object because what that book is doing is unrighteously fulfilling a sexual desire. And so you've got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Come on, is this helping anybody? You got to be led by the Holy Spirit, even as you are going on this journey to determine what is cursed and what's not. Because what you guys are going to want me to do is you're going to say, Pastor Mike, give me a list. I need 1,263 items on this list so I can make sure I get rid of all of them. But I'm not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I am a teacher of the Bible. And I am trying to help you. And so a cursed book, ask, your que ask the question, um, who is this book glorifying? What is this book glorifying? And then go from there, okay? Smash the like button if this is helping you, okay? And then drop a comment right now and let me know if there's anything that I've listed already that you've had to get rid of. Okay, I wanna move on. We've just got a few more to go. Make sure you stay through all 10. That was number seven. Number eight, and again, Christians get in a lot of trouble for this. Christians get in a lot of trouble for this. But I'm just going to go there, so don't be mad at me. Evil toys. Evil toys. Number eight. Now, I know that there's a whole bunch of Pentecostals watching right now that grew up in families where your mom made you throw away your Ninja Turtles. She made you throw away your, uh, your, your Transformers and your G.I. Joes. And you're thinking right now, I get it, Pastor Mike. You know, you want me to throw away all these toys. Now, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> there are overtly evil toys. I've got some examples up on the screen right now where they're depicting murder and mischief. And th that is an obvious thing. These show up in the form of collector's items. These show up in the form of, um, you know, nostalgia, things from our past. You've got to be careful though, because these, these cursed items, these evil toys, they have a value system connected to them. And you know what? I just want to say this, okay? Witchcraft is real. Okay, some of the ideologies and the belief systems behind the creators of these toys, of the comic books and the television series that they come from are anti-Christ. As a matter of fact, do your own homework, y'all. Look up the creator of the, of the toy and then look at how they talk about Jesus in interviews. Look about how they talk about, about, about the things of God. Some of these people are overtly, okay, um, they, they, like overtly, they're, they're trying to, um, they're anti-Christ. And you've got, now listen, somebody is asking about Pokemon. Let's talk about Pokemon. As a matter of fact, I just had a member from my church ask me, Pastor Mike, my kid has all kinds of Pokemon toys. What should I do? Pokemon cards, video games, whatever. Here's the thing, and this is why I believe a good leader doesn't tell you what to think. 
They tell you how to think. They give you a lens. The lens is called the word of God. They, the lens is called the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm not going to tell the parents of our church uh, on every little thing, do this, do that. But I will say when I was taking an anthropology class, there was a people group that we learned about called the Yanomamo. And the Yanomamo were a remote people and they were in, uh, they were in, they were a remote people cut off from civilization. One of the Yanomamo uh, was interacting with someone from the United States and they were communicating across languages because there's been many people that have gone to study the Yanomamo and they've now accessed their culture. And one of the high ranking witch doctors who looked at one of the Pokemon and, and said in his language, I know that I know this demon. I, because he saw the physical representation and he said, this demon likes to scratch and to bite and to, and to do these different behaviors. And it was crazy because in the description of the book, this Pokemon book, it said this Pokemon character bites and scratches and said everything that this Yanomama witch doctor said, even though he can't read in English. So there's stories like that. Um, you know, that that's just a, a story. I, I don't know how to verify it. But I'm saying that there are things where if, if, it's, if it's something you question, if you're in doubt, just throw it out. <laughs> and you know, if when in doubt, throw it out because there's so many alternatives for your children that are righteous. There are so many things that, that they can have. And so if this is helping you, um, I, I need to know. You got to show me some love in the comments. But we need to talk about these evil toys because our kids act out the behaviors it's about emulation. Look, what is an idol? You become the thing you worship. And so if you want your kid walking around with a meat cleaver with a mischievous face like the picture of the toy that I have up right now, then let him have that toy because he's going to reenact it. You know, it's like when I had toys... Um, when I had toys that, that like I, back in the day, I was, I'm going to kind of reveal myself, but I was all into WWF wrestling and I thought I was Hulk Hogan. But back in the day, Hulk Hogan said, take your vitamins and say your prayers. And so the worst thing I would do is, uh, you know, body slam my, my little brother, you know, but, but it's like, there's a big difference between WWF action figures, you know, where you got Hulk Hogan saying, take your vitamins and say your prayers. And then some of the stuff we got today that are systematically programming our kids for murder. And, and here's the crazier thing. It's like, you know, as each generation increases, so do the amount of mass shootings. And so do, it's like, so it's some, at some point, we've got to acknowledge that these things do have a spiritual effect at, at one point. And maybe it's not any one thing, but again, you add up all these cursed objects and, and enough cursed objects makes a culture of curses. I'm just going to say that again. I'm going to rewind that. But enough cursed objects in one place total up to make a cursed culture. And I think we've got to be wise. Okay, that was number eight evil toys. Number nine, and, and this is a big one, a big one, is evil jewelry, okay? This is one of the most important broadcasts that I've done in a long time. Evil jewelry. Look at the jewelry that we have depicted. You've got things in different cultures like the all-seeing eye, you know, the, 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 the evil eye. You've got jewelry like messianic rings. Sometimes they're, they're handed down from generation to generation um, because they, there was a lodge that, you know, dad was a part of or grandfather was a part of. And so these messianic rings, these different jewelries that people have, you've got to be aware of them. But Pastor Mike, it's supposed to help me. It's supposed to, it's supposed to ward off evil. No, it's not. It's attracting evil. It's bringing evil into your life. How do I know that? Because I have helped literally thousands upon thousands of people be, be delivered from demons. And many times I've had to make them take off the jewelry. I've had to make them remove the jewelry. And it's important to say uh, evil jewelry because one scripture says in the Old Testament, it says, don't even try to keep it. Don't be attracted. One of the scriptures says, don't even be attracted to the gold that's in it. Get rid of it. I know that's intense, but, but what, what, what'll happen is we'll say, well, but, but there's gold in it and that carries value and I don't want to lose the value. Not realizing that the cost of keeping it is greater than the, the value of the gold inside of it. It's a form of deception. Okay. 
and there's a lot of stones and gems and different things connected and you've got to be careful. I'm telling you guys, I've done deliverance on people and the Holy Spirit's told me, tell them, take their earrings out. And then it, I come to find out that, they, that the earrings were actually bought uh, you know, as a part of a ritual at a music festival. I can't tell you how many times people have gone to music festivals and there's been some sort of ritualistic thing connected to it. There's a lot of new age Reiki healers and there's different tattoos and piercings and things that happen that are associated with ritualistic practices. And those are things that need to be dealt with, okay? So evil eye jewelry, um, jewelry connected to the saints because essentially they, they become an idol. They are dead people. Stop praying to the saints. I've got entire videos dedicated on it. You don't have to go through the saints anymore. As a matter of fact, do, do not nullify the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His blood was spilled. The, the, the actual curtain was rent. It, it, why? It was torn so that there's no veil between you or God. You can come boldly before the throne of grace. And so I think that it's like, so sometimes when it's like, well, I've got these little, these little charms and I've got this, the saint on my necklace and this, and I pray to the saint. I mean, it does a, and it just, I feel like it grieves the heart of God to say, stop praying to Peter. Peter was just a man. Pray to me, speak to me. I, I'm the one who, when you receive, salvation adopted you and made you a son or a daughter. Peter was just a person. He played his part, but, but now we become fellow citizens with the saints. Come on, somebody. And so a lot of times, you know, it's like a barrier. See how this is the thing I want you guys to get out of this teaching. And I hope this is helping you. Do you all still love me? Cause I know I'm messing up your whole life right now, but let me just explain it. So you don't think that I'm just being ignorant right now. Here's the thing, in between you and God is a little piece of jewelry with a saint. And now you're praying to a saint instead of praying to God. So that is called an idol, remove it, get rid of it. Okay, instead of praying for the protection of God, you're saying, I'm gonna, this evil eye that I'm wearing, that's gonna protect me. So what's getting between you and God is that evil eye, remove it. You see, you see what I'm saying? Stop putting your trust and reliance on something that is not God. It's, it's like we've got to go back to the place where it's in Christ and Christ alone. And for all the people who are tripping right now saying, oh, Pastor Mike, there's no such thing as cursed, curse this or curse that. I'm telling you, and this is, you know, this is why I want you to understand this. It's about when you receive it into your home, you're one step closer to receiving it into your soul if not already receiving it into your soul. And for and what's happening right now is there's a group of people that is all trying to normalize everything. It's almost like this hyper grace, you know, every everything's okay. It's all about it's only about the spiritual, but it's good to understand that the natural is connected as well. Why would we have entire scriptures devoted to God telling people destroy physical items? Yes, Jesus died on the cross to remove the curse, but there are items that function as cursed objects because of the value system, the religious ideologies, the doctrines of demons that they actually represent. And we've got to get free. Okay, so here's another one. There, it's very trendy to where, uh, we just got a few more, y'all, so stay with me. We got one more after this. Number nine, evil jewelry. It's very trendy to wear uh, jewelry from other religions, other religions. And so it's trendy, you know, it's like, because, and here's the thing that's so crazy, man. It's like popular to be anything but a Christian. It's cool. It's cool to, to, to dabble into Hinduism. It, it's almost like you're, you're more enlightened. You're, you're fun. You know, you're, you're kind of like this fun, open-minded person. You know what I mean? Like the perception is, oh, you know, to like, you, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Can you drop a comment and, and just, and just tell me if you know what I'm talking about? Cause I'm feeling like I'm all alone right now. <laughs> okay. Because what'll happen is it's like, it's like being a Christian in, in our culture. When you tell someone you're a Christian, that means, oh, I get it. You're narrow minded. Oh, I get it. You're simple minded. Oh, you're anti-science because you're a Christian. But then there's something about like, 
Hinduism. There's something about uh, dabbling in paganism. There's something about the new age that's like, oh, you must be an entrepreneur who's also spiritual. Oh, you must be open-minded and cosmopolitan and worldly and secular. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's like we're in this weird we're, we're in this weird season where Christian means dumb, ignorant, closed-minded, and narrow-minded. But then when you see like Buddha, Krishna, Allah, you know, anything else they represent, th- that is connected. And that, that's a, that's, it's connected to intellectualism. It's connected to, um, you know, oh, you, you must be a true, um, you know, you know, a truly spiritual person. And, and you, it's, you see what I'm saying? And isn't it just like the devil? Again, he always shows up as an angel of light. He always shows up in the form that you will receive him. And, and so, and so again, you've got to beware of all of this evil jewelry. Take inventory. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Okay. And then the last but not least is this. You know, this is, this is a big one, y'all. This is a big one. And I'm, this is one I wanted to say in wisdom. Number 10, 10 out of 10 soul tie objects. Let's talk about that. What is a soul tie object? And I'm just talking from years and years of experience doing deliverance, okay? A soul tie object is an object that is connected to an experience that you had. It may be a sexual experience. It may be an experience with a lover, a past relationship. It, sometimes it's, a re, it's, an, it's an object that is connected to a parent or someone like that, but it is a soul tie object. And there's been many times where people have given me photographs, they've given me pictures and they've said, Pastor Mike, I've got to hand this to you. I feel like it's, it's a form of idolatry because I've looked at this picture. I've, I've longed to be back in that moment. I've longed to be with that person. Some people are even married. They've moved on to new relationships, but they can't get rid of these old pictures. Sometimes somebody kills themselves. Unfortunately, they commit suicide. And that picture, and, and they hold on to this one single singular picture. It's, it's in their wallet. And, it, and what that picture ends up representing is not, not the love that they have for that person, but the grieving that they're stuck in. And there's a demonic connection to the grieving. Is this revelation for somebody? Come on, let me know in the chat if this is revelation for you. So like sometimes these soul tie objects, this is number 10 of cursed objects, it, it doesn't, it's like initially the picture was like, I love them so much, I miss them. And the Bible talks about in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's a season for everything. There is a season for mourning. And, and then there's also a time to wash your face, put for a fresh anointing on and move on with your life. You know, hey, we're gonna grieve Moses. Moses died, but then there come a point where we say, we're done grieving for Moses, we gotta move on. And so sometimes these pictures And a lot of times in deliverance, I've encountered people having a picture that represents a grieving that is turned into a demonic grieving. It's, it's like this, this nostalgic longing. It's this, this desire to reconnect with this person and they become so fixated that they can't get free. And they've got to release that picture so that they can actually be, it's part of the freedom. Okay. It's part of, it's part of releasing that that grief. And so soul tie objects. Now here's what I want you guys to do because I've, I've literally went through all 10 of them. This is, we've been live streaming for almost an hour. I want to let, I want you to let me know in the comments, what helped you? What revelations did you get? Uh, My, my greatest prayer is that as I've been going through these objects, I, my greatest prayer is not that I gave you a a to-do list, you know, like, like this is okay. This is not okay. But rather through the scriptures and through the leading of the Holy Spirit, I've increased your wisdom and your discernment so that you can actually be equipped to go into your home and to go into the places that you dwell, into your car, into your place of work, at your desk, and make the decision to get rid of those things. But but I want to take it one step further, okay? So don't click off this, this video. It's not just about removing the object. It's about removing the the belief system, the doctrine of demons, the ideologies, the religious uh, infrastructure connected to it. And so if you're going to get rid of the object, but you're not going to get rid of the spirit connected to the object, you're not going to be free indeed. He says, "I uh, right, we want you to be free indeed. And so I want you to really understand that you've got to take this in phases. Phase number one is start destroying these objects. 
Don't keep them, get rid of them, okay? Phase number two is I want you to say, what happened? Man, I feel like freedom's about to break loose. I'll be honest with you. I feel like deliverance is gonna break loose right now, just me saying this out loud. I want you to ask yourself, what was I going through in my life? What trauma, what pain, what was happening in my life when this, when this object entered my life? What, what was I trying to replace the Holy Spirit with? What was I trying to, you get what I'm saying? Because that's where you're going to get another level of healing. That's where you're going to get another level of freedom. Okay. And so let me, let me just help you. When I bought that dream catcher and put it up on my bedside, when I, what, what, what was that? What was the real source of the nightmares? Because the dream catcher is not helping. It's just creating more of an atmosphere of the demonic in your life. But, but really what is the source of the nightmares? You know, when I was seeking out tarot cards and I was trying to get a reading for my future, then what, what was going on in my life that caused me to try to get answers from tarot cards? Because Holy Spirit, I'm renouncing that. I'm bringing all those idols down, but you now speak and you prophesy and declare through your Holy Spirit, my future. You know, when I thought that I was going to get healing through crystals, what in my body can I now, now that I'm destroying these crystals, what in my body now can I believe that Christ by your stripes, I'll be healed. These religious statues, God, now, now that I see the truth that Jesus, you are the way you are, you are the life. You are the only way to heaven. Now that, now that I see that I can't be helped by a Buddha statue, I can't be helped by Hinduism and, and all their, uh, their gods and goddesses. I, you get what I'm saying? Like not, what was happening that I put my trust in that God, I, my life was in such a hard place that I bought this lucky cat thinking that this lucky cat was going to bring me some kind of peace, some kind of enjoyment, some kind of happiness. But God, now I'm turning to you because I don't want to be lucky. I want your favor. I want the mighty hand of God to rest upon my life now. And you know what's funny? When I was looking at that lucky cat, you know what I saw? When I was looking at that lucky cat, it's got this big hand that goes up and down. And I thought to myself, I'm going to tell them in that teaching, why don't you replace the lucky, the lucky cat hand with the mighty hand of God? Let his hand and his favor rest upon your life. You know, and you've got, God, when I bought that jewelry and I thought that it was going to help me, show me that only you can help me. Show me that only you can, you're the only source of protection. You're the only one. So, so listen, I'm, I'm really hoping and praying that through all this, that God just blew your mind because I want to see y'all get free. I, I want you to go to the next level. If you got something out of this, smash that like button right now. Come on, tell the algorithm to get this into more people's feed and drop a comment right now and shout an amen to me and show me some love in the chat. Come on, let's, let's get this algorithm working for Jesus right now. If you haven't already, I'm going to ask that you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell notification so that you never miss another live. 